Hello, geometry students. This is Mr. Allen here. Today we are going to continue in chapter three and we are going to look at properties of parallel lines. Our objective here is to prove theorems about parallel lines. So, um, yeah, I'm going to do some proofs. So, there we go. Uh, also, we want to use properties of parallel lines to find measures of angles. So theorem 3.1, oh, I'm sorry, postulate theorem uh, 3.1. Remember, a postulate is something that we assume is true. So we're not going to actually be able to prove this. We're assuming that this one is true. And this postulate says that if a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then the same side interior angles are supplementary. Okay. So what this is saying is, is if this line L and this line M are parallel, then angles four and five, for example, add up to 180 degrees. Again, this is a postulate, so I'm not gonna prove it. We're gonna just assume that that's true. So let's look at an example here. It says the measure of angle three is 55. So we know that this angle right here is 55 degrees. Which angles are supplementary to angle three and how do you know? Well, automatically we know that angle eight is supplementary to angle one. Oops, I'm sorry, to angle three, because of the postulate we just talked about in the previous slide. The postulate on the previous slide tells us that same side interior angles, when the lines are parallel, are supplementary. So angle three has to be supplementary with angle eight. We could also argue that angles four and angles two are supplementary. And the reason we can argue that is angles two and four form a linear pair. And we know that linear, a linear pair with angle three, right? So angle three and four together form a line. Angles two and three form a line. Those are linear pair. So they have to be supplementary with angle three. I should uh, linear pair supplementary, okay? Also, we could argue that angle six, angle six, oops, angle six has to be supplementary, I'm gonna abbreviate with angle three as well. So these four angles right here are all supplementary to angle number three. And they're, oh, I guess I should explain why angle six is supplementary to angle three. If angle three is supplementary to angle eight, which we know that it is based on our postulate, angle six and eight are what we call vertical angles, and vertical angles turn out to be congruent. Therefore, angle three is supplementary to angle six. All right, so now we're gonna look at theorem 3.1. This is a theorem, I'm gonna prove it on the next slide. If a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then the alternate interior angles are congruent. So again, notice that we have two parallel lines, lines L and M are parallel. Then the claim is, is that angle four and angle six are congruent. So that's written here. Angle four is congruent to angle six. And similarly, angle five and angle three are congruent. Okay, so that's what the theorem says. The theorem says if the lines are parallel, then the alternate interior angles are congruent. So let's go ahead and do a proof of that. Now, I'm only going to do a partial proof of this. Um, up here is the theorem. And my goal in this example, we're going to use this diagram. Okay, I am only leaving the diagram up this theorem box up here, just for reference that that's the theorem. I'm using this diagram below though for our proof. And my goal in this proof is I'm gonna basically stop the proof once I've shown that angles four and five are congruent. Once I've shown that those four are congruent, 
then I could follow the exact same logic to get three and six to be congruent, okay? So that's how it's gonna go. I'm not gonna complete the proof, but I'm gonna do the first four steps and then I'm gonna stop. So statement number one says given for the reason and it's blank for the statement. So what's given in our diagram? What's the only information given? We've got line M, we've got line N, we've got the transversal T. Oh, what do these guys mean? It means that they're parallel. So I'm gonna say that line M is parallel to line N. That is given in this picture. Okay, statement two says angle three and angle five are supplementary. Oh, that's the postulate. That's by postulate 3.1. Postulate 3.1, which is the very first thing that we did today, postulate 3.1 says that if parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then their same side interior angles are supplementary. So that's, I can use that. That's, that's a step that I can use. Oh, by the way, I don't expect you to have the names of the postulates and theorems memorize, but you are more than welcome to reference them in this way. You don't have to write out the entire theorem or postulate. Step three says angles three and four are supplementary. Hmm. Why is angle three and four sub? Oh, those are a linear pair. Angles three and four are a linear pair. And guess what we know about linear pair? Linear pair are supplementary. All linear pairs are supplementary. Step four, angle four is congruent to angle five. Hmm, how did we get that one? Oh, okay. So if you look at statement two and statement three, here's what it says. It says angle three is and angle five are supplementary. Then in step three, it says angle three and angle four are supplementary. So why do four and five have to be congruent? That goes all the way back to chapter two. You wanna reference your book. That is chapter two, I believe it's section five, nope, section six, theorem 2.2, theorem 2.2, which is the congruent supplement theorem. Called the congruent supplement theorem, and it's on section 2.6, congruent supplement theorem. So now I have proven indeed that angle four and angle five are congruent. And those are what we call an alternate interior pair of angles. Now I could continue this proof to show you that three and six are congruent, but I'm gonna stop there on this proof. Okay, theorem 3.2. This is another theorem that we can prove. I'm not gonna prove this theorem. This one says that if a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then the corresponding angles are congruent. So if we have our two parallel lines again and cut by a transversal, then we know that all eight or all four pair or eight angles are congruent. So angle one and angle five are gonna be congruent because they're corresponding. Angle two and six are corresponding. So they're gonna be congruent all the way down the line. This is a very powerful theorem. All right, so let's look at example number two. Example two says line A and line B are parallel, so that's given, and we can even see that in the diagram. And it says prove angles one and angles eight are supplementary. Angle one and angle eight are supplementary. So I would encourage you to pause the video and just go ahead and write this proof. Um, I've left it completely blank. I'm gonna fill it out, but I'd like you to try to do that right now. So take a minute, pause. Draw the picture and see if you can prove that angle one and eight are supplementary. And by the way, your proof's probably gonna look different than mine. Okay, hopefully you have done the proof. I'm gonna go ahead and do the proof now, or my version of the proof. Um, so here we go. So I'm trying to prove that this angle here and this angle here are supplementary. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, and I usually start it like this, is I'm just gonna say that line A and B are par line A and B are parallel. That's given. I like to start with the given. Okay, great. So if they're parallel, what can we conclude? Well, based on our last slide, we know that angle one has to be congruent to angle five. And that is by theorem 3.2. 
theorem 3.2, or what we call the corresponding angles theorem, tells us that the corresponding angles have to be congruent. All right, great. I'm going to go to step three. I'm going to say that angle one and angle eight, oops, not angle one, angle five, sorry. Angle five and angle eight are a linear pair. They're a linear pair. Why are they a linear pair? By the definition of a linear pair. Okay, great. If they're a linear pair, guess what we can conclude? Angles five and angle eight are supplementary. Why are they supplementary? Because a linear pair form supplementary angles. So what does that tell us? And my handwriting is so bad, guys. I'm so sorry. I should have typed this one up too. So I know that angles five and eight are supplementary. Oh, I could then say on number five that the measure of angle five is equal to the measure, oops, I'm sorry, the measure of angle five plus the measure of angle eight equals 180. That's the definition of supplementary. Okay, great. Step six, I could say that the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle five. That is by the definition of congruent angles. Okay. Now, I'm almost there. Look what I've got. Now, I want to um, let you know that this is not an easy process, and I'm, I'm running out of room on this proof, but that's okay. I teach, I've, I've been teaching for a long time. I haven't taught geometry in a while, but I've, I've taught geometry several times in the past. I know all the rules and definitions and theorem. If you don't know them, you need to have a little reference sheet, some notes or something, or your book handy to help you come up with these things. So I claim now that the key steps that I'm going to put together are this step right here, step, oop, this step right here, step six, and this step right here, step five. Since I know that the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle five, and I'm going to have to go over here because I'm running out of room. I'm going to do some more steps over here. Uh, Step seven, I'm now going to say that the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle eight equals 180. And the reason for that is going to be because why? Well, I just substituted in step six. We said that angle one and angle five were equal. So I can replace angle five with angle one. So that's by the substitution property. And guess what? Write it down here. If angle one plus the measure of angle eight is 180, then that means that angle one and angle eight are supplementary. That's by the definition, supplementary angles. Okay, that was, a, that was kind of a, a long one there. That was eight steps. You may have done it in less steps than I did, but again, let me go through what I did. We're given that the lines are parallel, great. We can conclude that angles one and five are congruent by the theorem 3.2, which says that corresponding angles have to be congruent when the lines are parallel. Then I said that angles five and eight are a linear pair by the definition of a linear pair. Then I said that five and eight are supplementary because linear pair forms supplementary angles. Then I said that the measure of angle five plus the measure of angle eight equals 180. That's the definition of supplementary angles. Uh, the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle five. That's the definition of congruent angle. So we knew up here that they were congruent, so we can say they have the same measure. 
Now I can tie st statements five and six together to get the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle eight equals 180. That's by the substitution uh, property. And then finally, the uh, angle one and angle eight are supplementary angles, definition of supplementary angles. Okay, our last theorem today is theorem 3.3, which is the alternate exterior angle theorem. And here's what it says. If a transversal cuts two parallel lines, then the alternate exterior angles are congruent. In other words, angle one will be congruent to angle seven, and angle eight will be congruent to angle two. All right, next problem. It says, what are the measures of angles three and four? Hmm. Notice that in the diagram, they tell us that line L and M are parallel and line P and Q are parallel. We're trying to find the measure of angle three and four. Well, this, angle, this theorem right here tells us that alternate exterior angles have to be congruent. So if I'm looking at this parallel line and this parallel line with this purple line being the transversal, what would we call these two angles? We would call them alternate interior angles. So I claim that the measure of angle three also has to be 105 degrees. And that's based on theorem 3.3. Three. So by theorem 3.3, three, they are congruent by theorem 3.3. Three. So if, angle, if this angle is 105, then angle three has to also be 105. Now we've got to get angle four. Let's see here. So I'm going to erase what I have on my picture here so far. Let's get rid of all of that. So angle four, let's see here. Angle four is here. Hmm. Okay, well, what if we did this? These two lines are parallel, and now we'll let the green one be the transversal. Notice that those two angles, angle four and the one that says 105 degrees, those are what we call same side interior angles. And if we go way back to theorem, I'm sorry, postulate 3, 1 tells us that same side interior angles have to be supplementary. So when we go back to this particular problem, the angle 4 plus 105 have to equal 180. So I'll say the measure of angle 4 plus 105 have to equal 180. And that's by postulate 3.1. So therefore, the measure of angle four, I can subtract 105 from the 180 and I'll get 75. So that's the measure of angle, angle four. We've got both angles and the reasons. All right, last problem. So, um, oh my goodness, this is the exact same problem. <laughs> okay, so I must have copied the wrong thing down there. Well, okay, I guess that'll end this presentation.